saying, Lord Gita, it is God. What is God? What is nature of God? And who is God? And what is this thing as a living entity? Who is living entity? And what is our relation? These things are not in Bhagavad Gita. We have to find out. Oh. <coughs> it's not the Supreme Personality of God. He said, Aham Sarvasta Prabhava Matta Sarvam Sarvastati Iti Matya Bhajanti Nima Buddha Bhavasan So Krishna is the origin of everything. Aham Sarvasta Prabhava Sarvasta means including all other demigods. Even Brahma, Lord Shiva, and even Vishnu. They are emanation from Krishna. We are not in the baby seat character. Now Krishna is the original God. Therefore, Arjuna accepts it. Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Vishram, Param Amdhava. And the Goswami, the six Goswami, they are analyzed. Krishna characteristic, Narayana characteristic, Lord Shiva characteristic, Lord Shiva, uh, Brahma characteristic. They are analyzed. But it's scrutinizing everything. And they found it that Krishna is ten percent God. Narayan is ninety-six percent God. And Lord Shiva is eighty-four percent God. Lord Brahma is fifty percent, seventy-eight percent God. Uh, of course, uh, those who have studied basic literature, especially the book uh, named Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, given by Sindhu Gurushan, which has translated into English, Nature of the Lord, or the Science of the Lord. So you have to learn from the uh, basic literature, what is God, what are the living entities, what is their relationship, what is our ultimate goal of life, but everything is very nice and concise for is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. But we have to study Bhagavad Gita as it is uh, and the desire, not according to the physical commentators. Uh, nothing should be studied uh, uh, which is uh, against the principle of a Bhakti Yoga mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, as I have told you yesterday, it's not faith or joy. Bhaktoshi, Kyoshi, because you are my pure God, because you are my friend, dear friend, therefore I am speaking to you, Bhagavad Gita. It is very mysterious. Rahasam, Gita Dustama, and that mystery is very nice. So, in order to understand Bhagavad Gita, we have to learn it from the devotee. That is also not very difficult. It is not necessary that we have to find out a devotee. The devotee is already there, Arjo. And if you simply follow the footsteps of Arjo, if you simply try to understand Bhagavad Gita as Arjo understood, then your study of Bhagavad Gita is complete. That is not difficult. So, as Arjo said, that uh, Parabrahma Paramhama Pavitram Paramhama. You are the Supreme Personality. Ahatam Purusha. He is accepted Purusha. Purusha, the Supreme Law. Purusha, the Bhokta, named Yoya. And it's Parabrahma and Pavitra. Uncontaminated. Pavitra means uncontaminated uh, by the material nature. Paramhama. And he is the rest. Of everything. Krishna also says, Maya Tata Vidam Sarsam Jara Tabata Mutina, Mastani Sarva Bhutani, Nahana Tesu Avastita. So, everything is there. Krishna says that I am spread all over the world, all over the universe, Abhata Mutina, in my impersonal form. But, Everything is resting upon me, but I am not there. These contradictory times, how it is 
That is why how it is mitigated. We have to learn from a person who knows Krishna, not from others. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended uh, one brother who went to see him by writing some books, and they are not in order. His secretary, Sarutama uh, Goswami, uh, disqualified that these books are not written in the right order. Uh, he was surprised. He was supposed to be a great scholar of Srimad Bhagavata, but Sarup Goswami nullified it, that he do not write it. Uh, then he advised him, because that person was very submissive, he advised him that Bhagavata Paravya Bhagavata Sakya. Just try to understand Bhagavad from the person Bhagavad. Person Bhagavad, there are two kinds of Bhagavad. One is Buddha Bhagavad, Bhagavad, and there is another Bhagavad, which is person Bhagavad. Bhagavad means in relationship with Bhagavad. Ah. So those who have dedicated their life, one who has dedicated his life only satisfied for the service of the Lord, Bhagavad. He is called Bhagavad. So, as we are, if we lo- want to learn some specific subject, we have to accept a proper authority or a bona fide teacher. Similarly, if we want to learn the science of God, we have to approach a person who knows the science. Not that a casual person <laughs> takes one Bhagavad Gita and writes his comment and it goes on for some ulterior purpose. In that way, you cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. Oh. <coughs> and Bhagavad, Krishna, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Ishara Sarva Bhutana Amrita Sarva Bhutana He is situated in everyone's heart. So, as soon as you are actually a devotee, He is everyone's heart, but He is silent. But as soon as one is divorced, one is inclined to serve Krishna. At that time, he gives him intelligence. Oh. He does not give intelligence. He gives other intelligence in a different way. As he wants. Oh. As we want, because we are free. So, as we want, because without sanction of Krishna, we cannot do anything. Therefore, he, one has to take sanction from Krishna. Or doing anything. Uh, so, for others, he gives thanks and all that you do it. Uh, he, because he insists, Krishna does not say that you do it, because he perceives that I must do it. Uh, Krishna gives you thanks. That is a one thing. But uh, there is another thing that has to be stated in the Bhagavad Gita. That is thanks and for the divorce. Ketam Sarada Yuktana Bhagavad Gita. Uh, for those who are hot 24 hours engaged in my service, Satata Dutta, Satata means all of them without any disease, simply in Krishna Pantra, thinking everything in Krishna Pantra, he is seeing one class, he is surprised, this little girl, the other day we are walking in the hand and and this little girl, as soon as she saw some flowers, immediately she expressed her opinion that these flowers should be taken and made into garden for Krishna. This is Krishna. She is being taught from the very beginning of her life how to become Krishna. This is not the leader. It depends only on training. Even in this old age, ah, and especially in this age, then this method is very simple. Simply we have to agree in that person. Otherwise, Krishna consciousness is the simplest form of uh, self-generalization and advance in spiritual life. So Krishna, uh, as I was talking, that Krishna is sitting in everyone's heart. And as soon as one is inclined to serve it, he is also ready to respond. One who is engaged in the four hours in his service, in Krishna's head, 
Bhagavatam is pretty simple. Not as a matter of routine. Of course, we have to begin as a matter of routine. But when you develop <coughs> gradually love for him, that is called pretty. Uh, that's why this DT one says, our students, first of all, uh, they are engaged as a matter of duty, as the ocean of heaven. But by worshiping the deities, he feels an attachment for service. That is natural. But Kala Hakti, it is Kala Hakti. It will develop. It will begin. This is not only first step. At your home, then you will see, as the Kala Hakti says, an attachment for service. ભાવિકાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવાવ
March 30th, 1971. March 31st, 1971. April 1st, 1971. April 2nd, 1971. April 3rd, 1971. Hare Krishna! <laughs> All glories to Srila Prabhupada. First, greet my deepest greetings and humble obeisances and deepest gratitude to Lokanath Maharaj and all the angels out there who have joined us today. Uh, this is Shama Sundar Das joining you from the mountains in California. Uh, Lokanath Maharaj has asked me to speak something today on the 50th anniversary of the Cross Maidan Festival in Bombay, Mumbai now, uh, which was Lokanath Maharaj's first experience, his first taste of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna consciousness. Thus, this festival means a, really a lot to Lokanath Maharaj. I'm so happy to be able to have lived this long to speak about that wonderful occasion. I thought today I would read, just read and comment on my uh, description of this festival, which I've already described a lot in this. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, volume 2 of Chasing Rhinos with the Swami. This book uh, has uh, descriptions of the Cross Maidan Festival in it, full descriptions. So I'll read from that today. Now, it starts in 1970, the year 1970 in October, when Srila Prabhupada uh, arrived in Bombay or in India and brought with him 20 Westerners to reinvigorate or reintroduce Krishna consciousness into India. He called us his white elephants, his dancing white elephants. There were only 20 of us with this giant task of uh, introducing Krishna consciousness back into India. Mm -hmm. I won't go into long details on that uh, because we're talking about cross my, cross my dawn here. Anyway, right away, uh, Krishna consciousness surprised the nation of India. We were a national sensation immediately. And by de late December uh, 1970, we were, uh, we were traveling widely throughout India, preaching and doing kirtan, and Prabhupada was like day and night, uh, busy all over the country. We were in Surat, in Gujarat state, in late December 1970. Uh, and I'll just read something about that, uh, the introduction of the Cross Maidan Festival. After the evening celebrations in Surat, we gathered in Prabhupada's room. One night I asked him, Prabhupada, we have seen some of these huge outdoor programs they have in Bombay with big tents. They go on for a week, something like that Sadhu Samaj meeting, and with big lights and advertising. Some of the life members think, well, we also think, that it might be a good idea if we put on one of these tent festivals in Bombay ourselves. What do you think? Prabhupada replies, Oh, you have found a good place? We're thinking maybe Cross Maidan, that big park between Churchgate Station and Flora Fountain, right in the heart of Bombay. There was some kind of a Mayavadi festival there a couple of weeks ago, and thousands of people were going in. Prabhupada said, yes, it is a good idea. Bombay is the leading city in India. If I speak like this continuously many days, it will change everything. At least one week, the life members will help you. And I will speak there morning and night, and everyone is welcome. No admittance fee. You make big publicity. I will show you. And Prabhupada sits forward, takes his glasses out of their plastic case, and picks up his cross ballpoint pen. 
He sketches for a moment and says, You make like this, one big hall with a stage where we will sit, and here make a nice temple, and we will install Radha and Krishna deities. Decorate everything nicely, and behind some space for pujaris and prasadam. There must be prasadam for every person who enters. We shall call it Bhagavata Dharma Discourses. At last, a big project. Bhagavata Dharma Discourses in Bombay, a major rhino for sure. So now it's uh, late February 1971, and we finally got permission to use uh, Cross My Dot. But the show had to go on in less than a month, March 25th. We were very undermanned in Bombay. There was maybe six or eight of us at the most. So uh, we tracked down Prabhupada in Benares, sent him a telegram, and he sent all the available men in, in, in India to help us in Bombay mount this massive uh, project. Altogether, though, there were probably only about 12, or maybe 14. So, next, I'll read from the book. Uh, and everyone was assigned a task. Collectively, we drew our we threw ourselves into the Cross Maidan project and it took on a life of its own. It was bigger than anything we had ever done in our lives. Cross Maidan, an ancient word for playing field, is the middle section of a one mile long, 150 acre swath of open lawn and trees that runs north-south through the center of downtown Bombay, much like Central Park in New York City. The entire park, named the Esplanade by the British, is composed of Cooperage Cricket Grounds and Azad Cross and Oval Maidans. Cross Maidan is bounded on the west by Churchgate Railway Station, and just to its east is Victoria Terminus. Vir, Vir Nariman Road borders Cross Maidan's five acres to the south, and as, is, as it is situated between two railway stations, it carries the heaviest pe pedestrian traffic in Bombay. It's the perfect spot for a spiritual circus. Tamal Krishna came. He was in charge of the physical... Uh, Details of putting putting together the tent and all of the grounds. Uh, Madhavisa was there. He he was and Jamuna were in charge of the program itself. Mm. Kiriraj was there, and he and Rishi Kumar were in charge of raising the money. Mm. Uh, there were no deities to install in this place yet. So that was another problem, but we knew somehow rather magically Krishna and Radha and Krishna would appear. And just by accident, uh, uh, Hansa was in Jaipur and R.D. Birla had promised to give uh, Prabhupada some deities carved in Jaipur and apparently there was a set ready. And uh, Hansa Duda telegraphed that he was picking it up and bringing it to Bombay. So just a few days before the festival was ready to begin, the deities arrived. I was in charge of the advertising. I was having fun with advertising. There were not many restrictions in Bombay yet regarding commercial advertising, so we had a crew of men painting signs on canvas and wood. 80-foot banners to stretch over major intersections. Smaller signs for lamp posts along every major road in town. Indian sign makers are very skilled and cheap. Red and blue letters on a white backdrop was our motif. Driving around, we'd say, Oh, look, there's an empty spot. You can see that from a 100 yards coming and going. And we'd plaster yet another part of the town with Hare Krishna, Cross Maidan, or Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Bhagavata Dharma Discourses, or Prabhupada is Coming. 
or save your life now. Corny stuff. American style, splashy. But we could feel Bombay beginning to buzz. One tall, enthusiastic Parsi boy named Noza Man Mancherji began to hang out with us at Akash Ganga, and lent, that's our apartment, and lend a hand at the Pandal. The Parsi people, we'll go into that. When Noza, later initiated as Mahamsa Das, uh, saw us running around putting up signs, he told us that his cousins owned an advertising company called Selvel. I could have kissed him. I'd seen the word Selvel on almost every billboard, or hoarding as it was known in India, in town. Noza convinced, us his rel convinced his relatives to donate more than 30 major billboard sites around the city. Now we had huge hoardings. 50 to 70 feet long and 20 or 30 feet high, mounted at the best locations in Bombay. Large size mechanical printing didn't yet exist, so teams of skilled sign painters on scaffolds worked day and night with paints and brushes to create huge text and images. Their reproductions of Prabhupada's face were astoundingly lifeless. Prabhupada arrived at Santa Cruz Airport on March 15th, just 10 days before the festival. And as we drove him into Bombay, everywhere he looked, he saw Hare Krishna Festival, World Preacher of Bhakti Cult, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. And when he turned to me in the car with that special grin of his, I never felt better in my life. I found a guy who fabricated light plastic helium-filled balloons and challenged him to make us one 5 meters, 16 feet in diameter. He artfully cut and fastened together dozens of flat white plastic triangles to create the largest balloon to date in India. He painted Hare Krishna on either side around the waist of the balloon in bold red letters three feet high. Six blue triangles tapered toward the apex on each side. We held our breath when it made its maiden voyage, but it slowly rose 200 feet in the air, floating high above across Maidan, tethered by six white ropes. In a harness below the big balloon, the manufacturer had hung flashing white lights that read, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. When he turned the lights on, we let out a collective cheer. You could see that balloon from one end of Bombay to the other, from Nariman Point to Tardeo. <laughs> and didn't we see Krishna at work on this project? Our problems disappeared one by one. Key devotees just happened to show up at the perfect time, and money appeared out of thin air. So many coincidences, so many coincidences and events came together with only minimal planning that there was just no question of who was in control. And it was such fun! Uh, Prabhupada always said that spreading Krishna's name and fame should be a joyous experience. And he himself was always jolly and laughing. We couldn't count the number of times we laughed until the tears came in the days leading up to the festival. We were a fine cast of characters thrown together on an impossible, near surreal errand for Krishna. We never knew what was going to happen next, but whatever it was, we knew it would be Krishna's arrangement and therefore full of pleasure. The Hare Krishna Bhagavata Dharma Discourses Festival opened to the public on Thursday, March 25th, 1971. 
and Bombay citizens poured into Cross Maidan by the tens of thousands. A fence of almost half a mile of dark blue cloth, ten feet high, wrapped the perimeter, topped by thousands of flashing colored lights. People entered through twenty-foot-wide arched portals that we'd rented from a Bollywood movie set. There were three entrances on three sides of the ground. Center stage was dominated by breathtaking Radha and Krishna deities. Krishna jamming on his flute and Radha, palm upraised, greeting the multitudes. They occupied a simple but elegant deity house, ten feet wide by twelve feet high, which sat on a red velvet three-tiered altar. They were wearing bright silk dresses and crowns and jewels, a peacock feather in Krishna's hair, and were draped in rose and tuberose garlands. The people of Bombay were clearly astonished to see such elegant deities. Strands of fresh tuberoses and jasmine flowers hung like strings across the stage and before the deities, dancing in the breeze created by electric floor fans. Above the altar we'd hung a pyramid of bright electric lights that flashed from side to side, top to bottom, in a hypnotic sequence. An announcement was made, and thirty onstage devotees, flush from hours of kirtan, bow down to welcome His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Maharaj. Prabhupada ascends the stairs, stage left, hands his bead bag and glasses to an attendant, walks to mid-stage, stops to gaze at the deities a moment, then bows, knees and head to the floor before Radha and Krishna. He then turns and sits, legs folded, on his Vyasasan, a low red upholstered armchair beneath a red gold-fringed umbrella. And he settles himself, and as he settles himself, is totally silent in the vast arena. Twenty thousand people. He opens the Bhagavad Gita on the low table before him, does his, uh, dons his horn-rimmed glasses, taps the Chicago radio microphone a few times, and clears his throat. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your taking so much trouble in participating with us in this great movement of Krishna consciousness. As I am repeatedly placing before you with all humbleness that this movement is very, very much essential, not only at the present moment, but also all the time. Srila Prabhupada spoke mornings and evenings in the ten days that followed, giving long, profound lectures on such topics as Kali Yuga, Krishna, not a Hindu god. Krishna consciousness is authorized. The Hare Krishna people and the duty of India. Prabhupada also initiated six new disciples on stage in a Vedic fire ceremony, with his disciple Subal Swami conducting the rites. He also had a big wedding ceremony between a Swedish boy and um, an Australian girl, in which he, after which he commented that this is the, Krishna consciousness is the true United Nations. The people of Bombay love this stuff. A young Indian man in the crowd named Raghunath Bhagavan Patil also saw the devotees during the festival and later remarked they were pretty dead serious, grave, convinced, knowledgeable, and I had the impression that if his, if his followers and disciples were like this, I can only imagine that their guru must be far, far superior. Patil soon became Lokanath Swami, one of the greatest leaders in Prabhupada's movement. Also on, in that uh, Cross Maidan festival on the, that occasion, uh, 
Radhana Swami appeared too as a young hippie out of the crowd as Richard Slavin. Mm -hmm. But unlike Lokanath, he waited another mm, several months before he became uh, involved with Sri the Prabhupada, dedicated himself with Sri the Prabhupada, didn't get initiated for many months after that. Whereas Lokanath jumped in and became initiated. The festival had been a resounding success. Cross Maidan put the Hare Krishna movement on the map in India almost overnight. Krishna culture was now so popular in India that government-owned Air India featured a romantic Radha and Krishna theme on its April 1971 timetable. Prabhupada's fame spread out from Bombay like a tidal wave. And for days after Cross Maidan, Prabhupada kept saying, Yes, this is the way. He immediately dispatched Tamal Krishna, Giriraj, and Gurdas to Calcutta to arrange a similar Pandal program there. These Pandals then were uh, held all over India in, this, in the coming years, but Cross Maidan was the first of its kind. I'm so thankful to Lokanath that he came as that day and became what he has become, one of the greatest leaders in Srila Prabhupada's movement. He's helped Srila Prabhupada so much. I just, his enthusiasm, his, his commitment, I could never even possibly imagine achieving myself. But thanks to Lokanath and his some of his, many of his other God brothers and sisters. This movement is going on in a very big way. Thank you so much, Lokanath. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I'm just finishing up volume three now of Chasing Rhinos with the Swami, and it's really the crown jewel of this trilogy. So when it comes out later uh, in the next few months, I pray you will all get a copy and enjoy it. Thank you so much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories, all glories to you, Srila Prabhupada.
The grand finale is here. Reliving the Hare Krishna festival at Cross Medan, Bombay. It's going to be on Sunday, the 4th of April at 7 p.m. IST. And it's going to be live. We will have Lokanath Swami, Radhanath Swami, Giriraj Swami, Vegavan Prabhu, Mother Padmavati, Yadubara Prabhu, Mother Vishaka, where we'll be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Lokanath Swami and Radhanath Swami first meeting with Srila Prabhupada in association with senior Prabhupada disciples present in the 1971 festival. This will be live on Lokanath Swami official YouTube, Facebook and Mayapur TV pages. Be there, be present and we look forward to seeing you. Hare Krishna!